Okay, so we're going to do a paper cutting school install, very basic one. Uh, so first thing we need to do is install our printers. So on the server 2016, on the start, and go to server manager. So in here, if I enlarge that, we've got tools, and just down a little bit here, we've got print management. So at the moment, no printers installed by the ones that are there by default. So I'm going to right click in there, do add a printer. And normally here you put the IP port that you would have set up previously. But for our testing, I'm just going to do null port, which means it just doesn't go anywhere. Uh, it just allows us to test without a printer. So next, here, because my driver's already installed, I'm going to pick the printer. So I'm going to use Kaisera. Okay, I'm going to call this my output. And then Q. Don't want to share that because the users don't print to that one. And then finish. So once I've got my output queue, I'm going to set up my follow me queue. So add that again, null port, same print driver. Okay, and then I'm going to call this my follow. Oops, follow me queue. And this one I want to share. And that's my follow me queue. So you set your defaults on the follow me queue because that's the one that people are going to print to. So because it doesn't talk to the machine, you add the options. So extra trays, 4000 cheap finisher, whole punch if he's got one. In this case, I'm going to put a folding unit as well. Then I'm going to go to my advanced settings, and you have to untick this little box here. Okay, and then print the defaults. I'm going to set black and white, two sided, plain paper. Okay, so that's the defaults. Um, and you also can set that in general and preferences as well. That only works for the server, nothing else, but for testing purposes, I'm going to set that the same. Just like that, and apply that. Okay, so that's the print queue set up. So the next thing we're going to do is install PaperCut. So I'm just going to minimize all these. So there's my installation file for PaperCut. So I'm going to run it. It warns you about 32 bit workstations, which really these days there shouldn't be any out there, but it's just a warning just in case they are. So, okay, so that. Set agreement and next. Next again. Next again. Standard installation. You have four options. You've got secondary print server, web server, and site server. That's for a bit more advanced than what we're doing now, so I'm going to leave those for now. So we just want primary server. Shortcut to stop, yes please. And then it just warns you it knows this is a virtual machine, which you'll probably see pretty much every time you do this now. So let's say no, I don't care because I don't want to see a web page to tell me what I should do. Hit install. And there we go. Now this will go through the install. It gets about three quarters of an it will pause for a little bit depending on the server. Uh, don't worry about that, it's quite normal. Um, and then um, we'll carry on to a couple of messages at the end. I'm going to pause this for a minute and then I'm going to come back to this when it's finished this bit. Otherwise you're just watching a, a line up the screen. Okay, so that's got to the end. So you've got this tick box here, so do finish. I'll give it a moment or two. Now depending on the server, this web page may not come up straight away. You may get like an error, can't find page. Um, normally the thing to check, if you right click down here and do task manager um, and look at your CPU, um, if it's sort of 100%, then that page won't open, so you have to wait. Um, also down the bottom there, which you can't quite see, normally you'll see it as that page. So you have to hit more details just to expand it so you can see that. But ours is opened, so this is where you put your password. Now normally we would do the old ASL password in here, but I'm just gonna put password for a minute, because it's shorter. English United Kingdom, which is fine. Um, so this will depend on the business. So most common we do is education. Um, basically the different ones just set different restrictions as soon as the software starts. So. Education is the least restrictive, so we're going to go with that for a minute. So here you set the costings that the user wants. 
I'm going to put 4p for a colour, 1p for a, a grayscale for the minute. Uh, initial credit, so £5. Um, this option here means basically when that gets to zero, can't print. So a lot of schools probably want that on, but they don't just untick it. And you can always do this later anyway. Hit next. So this is where it tries to pick up the users. There's different options here. Uh, most people have an Active Directory, but I'm sure that's going to change as time goes on. So you can import all the users if you want to, or you can do selected users. So I'm going to do selected. Hit next. So this is now query my server to find out all the users that are available. So if I look at my little list here, there should be a training one. So here we go. Now, OU is uh, normally the group we want. So there's training. Tick the box. Scroll down the bottom. Hit next again. Down here a bit more. Confirm. It's just same the usual those settings are what you want, which they are. So this is now where I'm going to import the users. It's only three users, very small setup. Um, I don't want to give paper cut settings off that server, so I'm just going to untick that, hit login, and then this just logs into my uh, paper cut console. Okay, so for the next step, if I go to my printers, once it opens up here, so this shows me the two queues I've set up already. So the following queue, we have to configure that so it becomes a queue that can divert jobs elsewhere. So click the printer. Okay. And scroll down this little window here. So this says the queue type. So at the moment, it's a physical device, which it's not. So go into that. There's only two options. It's a virtual queue. Here you tell it which printers it can send those jobs to. So we've only got one queue. If I had 10, I can select all 10. As long as drivers are compatible, then that should be fine. Down a little bit further here. So enable hold release. That's what pauses the print jobs so the users can release them when they're at the machine. Down a bit further. Now, I tend to select this option now, hide document names. So basically, um, from the queue that everyone else can look at, they won't see what the print job's called. It'll just say hidden. Um, obviously, that's better for GDPR. Someone might be printing P45, something like that, or disciplinary, anything like that. Uh, you don't really want people to see that. Uh, the users themselves, when they log in, they can see the names. So it's just restricting everyone else from seeing it. So we'll go a bit more. Uh, you can do OK or apply. Both will apply. So I'm just going to do OK in this case. And that is now set. Now, the next step you would normally do through devices, to, uh, so you configure the actual printer to add these. Now, this is not going to work on my virtual machine because I haven't got a uh, printer here. Um, so I'll do the rest of this on another server just to show you this sort of second bit. I'll do it as a separate video because otherwise it's going to be a bit confusing. So um, just to show you what this bit does as is. So at the moment, you can see no jobs printed. So I'm going to go into my printers. So I'm going to do a job to the follow me queue. Print. So you can see it says one job and it's just sitting there. You think, well, what's that doing? So if I go to my paper cut screen switch so jobs pending release so we're in printers jobs pending release one job it's come from the administrator it's just a test page okay and if you look on here currently no jobs so I'm going to release that so I'm going to hit print um, and it's only got one queue but here you can select which one you want to output the job to so select that the jobs now Queuing. If I refresh that, it's probably disappeared already, which it has. So if I go back to my printer list now, and you can see here under output, it shows one page. So you can see it doesn't count on the follow me queue, it counts on the actual queue it prints on. Okay, so if I click that printer, go to my job log, and in there, user was administrator, job charge to administrator. It was one page, wasn't color, so it's cost 1p. It's called test page, and it printed. That bit's not guaranteed because uh, it doesn't always print, but it's just so you can see the message and it does. So now I'm going to just go back in again. Uh, I'm going to go back to my printers. So if that's on that screen. So at the moment, one job there. I'm going to go to my printers again, and I'm actually going to print the output queue just so you can see what it does. So this isn't part of the follow me system. The users won't see this, but if I do it as a print just to test the queue, so straight away, zero jobs left. 
And if I go into here, if I just refresh this screen here by clicking on that again, two jobs. So it didn't hold jobs, it just literally sent that job straight to the print queue and that would have printed out on the printer. So follow me queues hold, the output queues don't. Um, and that's pretty much the basis of paper cut, that's how it works. Um, you've got different sections here where you can see all the users. So there's my users here. Groups are groups from the, um, the server groups. So if I was to go add remove groups here, I can scroll through that list we were looking at at the start. If I go down through that list, there's lots and lots and lots. So if I wanted to actually put my training account in there, I think, oh, you know what, I want to put my administrators in there as well. So back up here, there's my administrators. And, and you can do multiples. Um, so basically, when they're on this side here, then when you're doing any sort of restrictions and things like that, you've got these to control it all. So just add that. Um, and that now, if we go into groups, we look, you can see, you've got two groups. Yeah, and if you actually click them, I don't know if you saw it there, show members. So it shows who's actually in that list. Okay, so if you notice, no administrator. So if I go back to my groups, back to administrators, there's only one member. Uh, filter, and there's my administrator. Um, and that's how it works. Um, when you've got the app on the devices, they come up in this bit here, but at the moment they're not there. Uh, and basically this is where you configure where the, uh, the printer will pick the job up from and where it's going to send it out to. Uh, but as I said, I'll do that in a separate bit. Um, enable printing is for what they call mobile printing and this new thing called print deploy. That's again not something for this little bit of training. Um, but that's quite handy. That's configured on a lot of servers now. Reports, which is what they love saying what the machines have done obviously there's not going to be much in there in a minute because we've only done one print job but I could just hit that and you should be able to see two jobs I think it might show some more because I did play with this earlier on so it's just sort of creating the report so it takes a little bit longer and then once it comes up it should come up on the screen but it's been very slow there we go and there's our report so it's just an executive report on printer Two jobs printed, number of trees is burnt. This are the graphs. Oops, people love all that. All right, that is it for this little bit. Okay.